hi everyone and welcome back to another video so today I'm just going to make a short video detailing a Saratini experiment that I did for three months so it was like a little project that I worked on um, feeding Saratini seedlings I did a similar one last year which I did a small video previously uh, quite a few months back now uh, which I just described doing that and the results that I got of that then this time I did it in a bit bigger scale which I did as like an educational kind of project which was mainly um, for my own personal kind of viewing just to see how it would turn out doing it on a larger scale so I used the Saracenia cross um, Moria, um, Saracenia Moria cross the Coppola seedlings that I have got a lot of so I sowed them all from seed February last year so they're quite young and I want to see how different feeds would affect obviously their growth and any other morphological um, changes so obviously into colour um, shape or anything like that so I did three trays so there's 15 plants per tray the first tray I did a foliar feed of maxi crop which is a organic seaweed feed I use that because um, some growers use a maxi which is not commonly found here in the UK so I did uh, an alternative of using a maxi crop which still would work the same and you know people have had mixed results on it uh, that I've been reading. Tray 2 I used um, the, it was the Miracle Grow uh, Ericaceous Fertilising Pellets that you get so um, I did two of those per tray of the pellets and then the third tray was a control so there was just obviously treated with just the rainwater there's nothing in the soil I didn't apply the plants of anything just to compare with the other two trays to see how they grew differently to those that were treated uh, I didn't do it necessarily for uh, height or seeing if any of the plants to survive I didn't actually expect them to either do much or even survive I was expecting to lose a few plants luckily I didn't some of them did struggle I'm just going to basically turn the camera around and show you these now. So it's been a month and a half since I finished the experiment. So they've kind of all gone to the same or similar rate. So I might put pictures over the top just to show you how they looked in the experiment. So I'll just get onto it and show you what the seedlings look like now. So this is what the seedlings look like now. So you can all kind of see that there's all different heights and ranges at the moment, but they're looking really nice at the moment as a whole. So looking at the head on, obviously it's really nice having 45 plants there and um, obviously being different sizes, shapes and colours. So this is tray one, which was applied with the foliar feed each week. Now I didn't notice um, much in the way of height with any of the trays. They all kind of stayed the same height. So there wasn't much data in that kind of aspect. But with tray one, that was the most damaged. So these ones at the back, as you can see, which has now recovered a little bit, um, they always had like, they, when the pictures came up, they had quite damage like this, so they curled and it wasn't any pest damage. I did check for pests when doing this. Um, and then when they did start coming up, they kind of had these weird curved lids. But as you can see, they have still been um, catching insects um, once they got a little bit bigger. But yeah, these were the most damaged ones, but they did start showing a bit of color in the top of their pictures as you can see and obviously they've got the frilly lid which the Lucophila possess so they were still quite nice they uh, had the most um, kind of like height variation in the experiment but overall they're all reasonably the same size and had quite good functioning pictures so tray two here was the tray that I would say was the tray that had the most differences compared to the other two so this one actually showed something in response to the experiment which had the um, feed in the soil so the pellets in the soil um, and the difference I got with this is that the pictures were smaller than the other two trays but they had the most colour and like vigour in the structure of them so they quite sturdy pictures none of them were really damaged there was like one or two but as you can see the colour which obviously is the traditional lacophila colour was really nice on them so especially the middle um, row were quite prominent in their colour so it got brighter each week obviously the lacophilas only have the colour at the top of the picture so um, it will mainly be this white none of them really got the pink lip though that um, the parent plants of these ones do have so they got a bit of colour not like their parents but obviously they are young seedlings but it's just interesting to see how these ones got colour you can see this one down here has got little bit of a pink tinge around its lip but 
they even though the pictures were shorter, they did obviously show the best um, trapping, um, so attraction for insects. And as you can see, the tubes are big enough to support um, having insects trapped in there. And then finally, with the control, which obviously just was in rainwater, these ones all had, they would say, about a varied um, height. So they didn't grow as quick as the others. The other ones shot up a little bit quicker, but these ones still grew quite fast. Um, the one at the back, which um, is seedling 15 in the control tray, was always the biggest. So I think from like week four of the experiment, it had grown these really tall, these ones are now 12 centimetres, but they were growing nine to 10 centimetre pictures. And um, obviously they're good for storage, so that obviously suggests that maybe the plants um, were wanting the insects and obviously grew taller and larger pictures so they can be able to store more. And as you can see, um, they've definitely been able to store more insects in these and it obviously helped with their height. So even though they weren't getting fed, they produced these larger pictures, which has helped them grow to the same size as the ones that were. So that is basically what I concluded from my experiment over the three months that I did it. Okay, so that sums up everything uh, that I noticed in that experiment. So in terms of height, there wasn't really much of a difference. Um, looking at all the data together, the heights of each tray were practically about the same, so the nice steady rate of height. The most obviously interesting thing of the experiment was the colour, how colour varied from each tray. So they all got the same sunlight, they all were it was all sitting in water. Obviously tray two I had to place in a tray, a different tray, so none of the pellets obviously leached into the soil affecting the other two trays so either they were still placed all though to, all together but obviously the water weren't mixed but they were using the same amount of water so it's really interesting to see obviously that color was the most interesting thing from that so maybe that my feeds could have been um see escalated a bit more so i had a little bit more feed or you know using different amounts of experiment with different kinds of feeds and stuff like that so it's all something that obviously I could work in in the future but this one's just a bit of fun I didn't want it necessary for height or anything to change the experiment with but I am really happy with the results to say that I got something to see that obviously soil was a major key factor because in the wild nutrients will leach into the soil naturally and also that also helps um, because the stress of the plants will um, make them change how they present themselves to catch insects to adapt to having those conditions around them so I I'm quite happy with obviously having the color like I said this is obviously well it's the same um, age as the rest of them this is my seedling which I sowed in a single pot I didn't stratify it just to see if they would work or not and this one seed did come up it's always lived in its own pot so it is the largest these traps now are quite big but it's the same age as all the others and as you can see this has never been treated with anything but it has nice colour so if I could just show please if I turn it around they've got the nice lip as well so they've got the pink lip of the parent plants and obviously nice tall pictures but large storage so like tray free which had no uh, feed to it had the larger pictures for storage which means they've been able to capture larger insects and obviously have a bit more of this wing here um, which obviously helps them photosynthesize so that's a nice specimen of what they will turn into hopefully now also that they have been placed in their own cell trace they've got their own space to move where the experiment did last year they were all in a grouped pot so obviously that also varied with the results that I got so that is it for the Saracen experiments. I think I'll just note here about my Regia because um, I've had a couple of people who were interested in it. So this is my Regia at the moment. Luckily it hasn't started um, going down for um, dormancy yet. Yeah, obviously it will die down to the roots and hopefully come back. I really hope it does. Um, last year I took it inside to because um, I didn't want to lose it. But this year, because it's a nice big plant, I'm going to um, keep out here and let it do its thing. But this is my Regia, and this year I decided to also use the same Ericaceous um, miracle Grow pellets in the soil. So um, Drosa Regias have like a hunger really for um, the insects, they like a lot of nitri nitrogen. So I used the slow release nitrogen pellets in the soil in hoping that it would give it a boost. It was really small when I first got it and um, it was quite small when I reposted it in that longer pot. and it really loved it this year so I can't get enough of that plant but I'm really happy with how it's done and the size it's grown into so I'm really confident that it will be
be absolutely fine over winter and come back. I'm hoping to also propagate it from root cuttings as well because that's the easiest way to propagate those plants but obviously that's just for another time. But for now, so thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found it interesting.